The first thing is to have a team, a mature idea, not just a, a, a rough concept, but something that was already thought through for a while. Uh, some business savvy, some understanding of how to grow a business and find customers and so on, and at least a rough financial forecast. If the answer to this is no, then get some advice and maybe apply for an incubator where you can have a lot of advice, uh, some mentoring, some good contact and so on. Then I will assume this is fine. Uh, you know, start start doing work. If you yourself are not uh, technically competent for this, you need to hire some people. It can be internally, it can be in a design firm. Um, and then once you're really in the thick of product development, you're working on this, you're working through uh, design iterations, uh, prototype iterations and so on, uh, and you start to see you will need some investment. Now the question is how, how to go about that. Can you can you relocate, can you comply with an accelerator program's requirement? If the answer here is yes, then uh, try to get in an accelerator. Uh, they will help you, uh, they, will, they will give you some advice and some help for market traction, for raising money. All right. Uh, if all of this is not really uh, something you can do and a lot of People are not really interested in that. Uh, they want to just do things at their own pace, their own timelines, and and um, go at it themselves. Uh, and I would say no. Then um, you have your own team. Maybe you don't need all the internal resources of an accelerator, all the service providers that they can um, put you in contact with. It's not that difficult, right? So you will need some help with product engineering with supply chain management to, um, to build the bill of material to select the assembly supplier and so on. You need some help with quality assurance, maybe <clears throat> start to think of the testing plans and the reliability, reliability testing and the certifications and so on. Um, a lawyer to make sure the, the suppliers don't um, steal your IP and things like that. And also, uh, make some good use of a manufacturer's um, experience and technology. So experience, maybe they have one or two engineers that can do some of the work on one part of the product design. Technologies, maybe you need to work uh, with an ODM manufacturer that already made a certain specific kind of product before and you can reuse their technology, you're not infringing on, on anybody else's intellectual property, hopefully. Uh, it's always a big assumption in China. Um, and, and it might be just a, uh, a component for one of the modules that you're, uh, you, you, um, you, you are going to embed in your product, or it might be the full product. So anyway, uh, if, you, if you make good use of this, you can actually save a lot of time and energy and, and money through the product development. Then uh, you might think, hey, Maybe, maybe crowdfunding is a good thing. Um, it works uh, pretty well for certain kinds of consumer goods. Um, if, you, if you can um, do some B2C marketing, maybe Facebook advertising and things like this, maybe some of you have some experience. You should not do this too early because then a lot of potential competitors will see it. And you might find, you know, a couple of Chinese competitors get to market with a product that might be inferior, but is significantly cheaper than yours. And maybe they steal the market from under you. This has happened several times uh, that we've seen many times, actually. Okay, so crowdfunding, the good thing is that it helps also establish market traction. Um, and it also helps you with raising money because it's uh, advanced payment basically on products that you have sold it does not dilute your your own shares so that's great okay um, you will need money to keep going with the product development um, tooling the certifications and so on to make the first production batch and also to pay for the marketing or sales expenses okay people usually forget about that <laughs> uh, but um, 
if you intend to do Google AdWords uh, or Facebook ads and this these kinds of, uh, of, of maybe product placement, key influencers uh, and, and so on, all of this does not come free usually, uh, except if maybe your product is, is amazing, uh, but uh, you're one of the very lucky few. Um, also sales, if it's more of a B2B uh, or more um, uh, distribution driven, okay? Uh, you will need some sales, you will need people to go and see people and make um, and, and convince them to, to carry your product basically, all right? So once you get to product design complete and uh, a, a prototype that is fully working and looking uh, like you like you want and it's it passes your validation tests and everything okay product design done um, still have some work on process engineering um, usually also tooling for electromechanical products uh, certifications um, C FCC and so on um, a pilot run because if it's a new product that you're making, you absolutely have to do a pilot run before mass production. You know, this and this keeps going on and on. It depends on the kind of project, all right? And once you've done all this, then you're ready for production, okay? And if this has been done nicely, all this process engineering work, then production will come out nicely, okay? Uh, very few quality issues, uh, delays, cost of a run, and so on. And that's where actually you get to market, which is really um, your end goal here. Get to market, make some sales, place the second order for batch, batch production, and so on. So I hope it's clear. Um, these are just a few of the key decision points for a hardware startup. I'm not pretending to cover all the key decision points, uh, but this should already give you a good sense for that. Thank you.